Hey ladies, welcome to episode 143 and principle 10 in our series of intuitive eating. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Health Life and More for Women podcast. This is a podcast for women who are ready to ditch diets, ditch the scale and food guilt forever, and instead invite peace with food, body trust, and confidence in all of your choices. This show will shed some light on sneaky ways diet culture has infiltrated your thoughts, your family, and your well being. I believe that no matter the episode, you'll walk away feeling informed, inspired, and encouraged. I'm your host, Jennifer D'Amato. I'm a certified intuitive eating counselor, coach, a mom of four daughters, a lover of all things pink, and I can't wait to dive into each and every episode with you. Let's dive in now. When I started this series back in episode 133, what is and is not intuitive eating, it seemed like principle 10 would be so far away. You know, there's so much to cover and I did want to give bite-sized episodes. I mean, I could talk about each of these principles for so long. Like we could really dig into all of the meat, all of the things I could be on here for an hour, but that's not helpful. <laughs> my my heart's desire was to give you that bite-sized information, give you these key points and help you actually work through them for yourself. And if you bought the workbook, you've been able to, you know, have those key points handy, be able to take down notes and kind of reference for yourself, you know, what you think about, uh, you know, the principle, what you're taking away from it. And then of course, those deep dive questions on each of the principles so that you can start to dig a little deeper. That's why they're deep dive. (laughs) So if you haven't purchased that yet, you can purchase it at any time. I mean, any time, maybe you're just finding this podcast and it's, you know, the year 2024. Ooh, look at that. Talking to the future. (laughs) And you want to dive into the workbook pages. All you have to do is head to healthcoachforlife.com slash I E workbook and you can purchase it. It'll also be in the show notes for each of the episodes in this series, which was 133 to this episode, 143. So today we're talking about principle 10, which is honoring your health with gentle nutrition. Now, I I still want to just say you can go through these principles in any order, but (laughs) there's always an asterisk on something. You know, I always recommend kind of going back to that beginning and, you know, figuring out what is intuitive eating and what is not in episode 133. And I do think a great starting point is rejecting diets. Because if you haven't rejected diet mentality in episode 134, we talked about principle one, it's hard to do any of the other work. This principle, it's written last for a reason. It's listed last. It's not that nutrition is not important. Nutrition is so highly valuable. But if we are not honoring our hunger, we're not eating. If we haven't made peace with food and we're still really, really struggling, it's hard to put any focus on nutrition. It's hard to dive into those, you know, important macro and micronutrients our body loves and, you know, thrives having variety of of all of these things. If we're feeling guilty when we eat, if we're feeling, you know, stuck in the shoulds and the shouldn'ts. So I do believe this is the last one for a very specific reason. And when I work clients with these principles, this one sometimes gets like woven in places, but if we're going to put a focus on it, we're really going to hone in. It's definitely toward the end of our work together because healing our relationship with food has to take precedence. When we start focusing on gentle nutrition, food really has become neutral. There, there's no good and bad, but we're ready to start acknowledging, feeling into, learning more about how food feels in our body. And it's not that we haven't been paying attention, you know, working through these principles of how food is feeling, but here's where we're really going to put some attention to how food feels in our body. And I believe that actually starts like right away. That starts, when I say right away, I mean with the smells, with the sight, with the taste, on your tongue, like your taste buds, what they are experiencing and what you want to experience. You know, when we're stuck in dieting and in diet culture, oftentimes food becomes a chore, food becomes bland, food becomes, you know, just this mild 
I don't know, chicken breast <laughs> and vegetable or salads only. And, you know, flavors become dull. Variety becomes close to like zero variety. And we just start getting confused as what is my body even like? You know, what feels good to my body, in my body, and that I enjoy? This is really going to just encapsulate everything you've taken from these principles and look at nutrition from this place of what is it I want and what is it my body needs and what feels good in my body. I had a client share with me about this uh, sourdough bread that she ate and she's like, I really, really wanted it. She ate it. She had been working through allowing these foods back in. And then she noticed like it was okay. First of all, notice that it was just okay. But then she's like, I got really bad, like indigestion, heartburn. My digestive system was upset. This is a no go. She's like, this does not feel good in my body. She made such an empowered choice from that, you know, eating experience to say, I really don't want to feel this again. Maybe I'll look for another alternative, see if there's something that really lights up my taste buds. I can incorporate into, you know, my regular eating experience, you know, meals and snacks, but makes me feel much better than this. Like, I don't want to feel this way. So often in diet culture, we'll even eat things just because we're rebelling, we'll eat things um, because we think we're supposed to, even if they don't feel good. There's an influencer out there um, who talked about salmon. She said, I hate it. It's so gross. I don't like to eat it, but you're supposed to. So there she was, you know, making it and telling her millions of followers, like, go do this. That is the wrong approach to nutrition. Yeah. Does salmon have amazing omegas and it's a, they have healthy fats and it's going to be delicious. I mean, I love salmon, so I'm having a hard time even getting my head around it. But if you don't love it, why would you eat it? We already know that from satisfaction. So we can say, okay, if I'm really looking to increase fats into my diet, I also want to get omega, you know, threes, where can I get those? Because I don't like salmon. It's a completely different approach than I should be doing this. I'm noticing what do I enjoy? Do I like things that are sweet, salty, crunchy, silky smooth? Something that smells like really strong with cinnamon. Like, oh, oh, it's not even close to fall and I just had a moment. <laughs> Do I want hot? Do I want cold foods? Thinking about temperature, you know, when it's really hot in Arizona, the last thing I want to do is have a bowl of soup. But I tell you what, cold, cloudy, very rare out here, but cloudy winter day, give me chili, give me soup, give me something that warms my belly. So the first thing you can assess when it comes to gentle nutrition is variety. Do you feel you have a good variety for you within the context of what you eat on a given day, week? I would actually say go towards a bigger picture. Look at a week, not just a day. A day is a hard representation when it comes to gentle nutrition. I have a lot of women I work with who have been chronic uh, weight watchers, uh, participants. So they get so focused on a day, so focused on what a day means. Um, as a macro counter, I was the same way. Like what does a day mean? Except that's not really how our body works. When we look at gentle nutrition, let's take, I say a bird's eye view. Let's come up a little bit higher. Look at three, four days, look at a week's time. All right. So first we're assessing variety. You know, when you think about variety, what kind of variety comes to mind? Is it types of proteins? Is it certain flavors, scents? What does variety mean to you? And how does variety show up in the eating experience for you over a given week? Next, let's take a look at balance. And I think this is another misused concept, but let's take a look at what your body needs. So when we think about, you know, having balance in our nutrition, what does that mean for you? There were studies done where toddlers were given, you know, free reign to eat a wide variety of foods. They had no restrictions and they found over a week's time, I want you to hear that again, remember bird's eye view, that the, these toddlers, these kiddos received everything they needed for nutritional health. 
they got enough protein, enough carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and they got exactly in the amounts that they needed over that week's time. Again, intuitively, their body did. They didn't have all these messages coming at them about the shoulds and shouldn'ts, and they were not restricted. These are key elements. When we think about balance, when we think about, you know, how much of this do I need to eat? There's some messaging out there I've seen about the perfect plate and what you should include on it. Oh, so many rules, so many rules instead of trusting that our body knows what it needs, that maybe today, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling a lot of protein. I just wasn't needing it. I just wasn't feeling it. it didn't even taste good. But I noticed when I looked over a week, I had incorporated it in so many different forms in other places, other days that over a week's time, I really got a lot of protein in and I'm really happy with that. You know, I think so often we are caught up in a day's time and thinking we need to hit these certain markers each day. So again, I just want to encourage you when you think about balance, when you think about these uh, macro and micronutrients, your carbohydrates, your proteins, your fats, and then micro are your vitamins, your minerals, and then of course getting fiber. Don't get so focused on the day. Let's take a week's view. Let's get that bird's eye view and look, you know, how do I feel about balance in a typical week? Am I getting the balance I need? Is there anything I want to bring attention to when I am observe when I've observed, right? What's happened over the course of a week. Now I've already mentioned a couple of times the macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And if you've been around for a while, each of these macronutrients, diet culture has attacked in some way. But I want to just give you a, a very quick little <laughs> bit of information about each of them to show you how important each of the macronutrients are. Carbohydrates are taking the biggest hit right now. And these are our main source of energy. Your brain, your brain needs carbohydrates. It is exclusive as its energy source. It's also important that if you don't get enough, your body is going to start cannibalizing the muscle in your body. Like we, we don't want any of this. So carbohydrates are really important to our body. Now proteins are, these are your building blocks of muscles, your organs, hair, nails, enzymes, and your hormones. Now I am grateful that fats are no longer, you know, this horrible, evil, avoided thing. However, they've, they've put a little too much focus because anytime we focus on one and eliminate others, (laughs) not intuitive, but why are fats important? Fats are necessary for so many functions in our body for the absorption of fat soluble vitamins, you know, for the neurotransmitter receptor sites in our brains. Fats also provide us with satisfaction in our food. They're also for insulating us to keep us warm, protect our inner organs. Fats are so good. Now, when we talk about micronutrients, that's your vitamins and minerals. We need these to help convert food into energy, repair cell damage, strengthen your bones, heal wounds, boost your immune system. There's so many other things. Lastly, I do want to always touch on fiber. It is kind of separate. It doesn't have this nutritional value, but it helps in digestion. It's really necessary for healthy functioning of the gastrointestinal tract. All of these elements, macronutrients, micronutrients, and fiber are important. They're part of your nutrition. And what happens is with dieting is something is cut. Even if you're saying, well, I'm just cutting calories, I'm cutting out, you know, I'm using points. So I'm, again, that's still calorie cutting, you know, I'm counting macros, you know, so I'm still having all these except you're really limiting what your body needs. And you're removing that your body knows best when it comes to nutrition. And again, when we look at this bird's eye view of our nutrition, where are each of these elements fitting in? Where are these macronutrients of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats fitting in? And your vitamins and minerals. The reality is if we're cutting back on any of these macronutrients, we're missing out on the vitamins and minerals. So when you take that bird's eye view, when you step back and look at a week, where are these fitting in? So when I say we talk about variety and balance, 
what's variety and balance look like when it comes to these macro and micronutrients? Now, I'm not suggesting in any way you need to start reading labels. I actually advocate not to, but if you can start incorporating protein sources that you enjoy, fats that you enjoy, and sources of carbohydrates, whether those carbohydrates are coming from fruits, vegetables, and grains, potatoes, pasta, all of those things, like we want the variety in our nutrition while trusting our intuition. Before we wrap up this series, I, I want to make something really, really clear for this principle and for intuitive eating. Are you ready for it? Here's your mic drop moment. This does not have to be perfect. Your nutrition doesn't have to look perfect. Walking through these principles, there's nothing perfect about it. What if your entire focus for intuitive eating was learning more about yourself, learning in the journey? No one meal that you consume affects your overall nutrition and no one day affects your entire journey of intuitive eating. You know, there's no straight line here. <laughs> Sometimes there are loop-de-loos. <laughs> you know, I said that early on that there is no even end point. It's not that you won't feel like an intuitive eater. It's just that you'll start to embrace what you learn along the way. And then all of a sudden, it just feels natural. I know you might be far off from that right now. It might feel a little disconnected, but I promise you over time, consistency, practice, and being really compassionate with yourself, each of these principles can become increasingly easier and just part of who you are and what you do. You may have noticed through this series that there was one principle you just kind of want to stay and focus on. That's totally normal and okay. Head back to that episode, listen again, go back to those notes. Maybe even after listening to all of these, you have some other thoughts you want to jot down, or you want to go back to those deep dive questions in the workbook and dig a little deeper as to where you are now compared to where you were even then. If you enjoyed this series and you're listening on Apple Podcasts, would you just take a moment and leave a review? Just scroll down um, from the episode or in the show, leave the star review and leave a little note. I'd be so grateful for those. It helps other women decide, is this the podcast for me? And then if you're not part of my private community on Facebook, head into the show notes, join us today. You can continue on this journey to intuitive eating with a supportive community of other women on that same journey at all different places. And I'm in there twice a month, once for a live free training. And then I'm usually there for office hours or Q and a know that no matter what I'm over here cheering you on, on your intuitive eating journey. I look forward to meeting you right back here next week for another episode of the podcast. Hey ladies, have you heard the news? I have an amazing intuitive eating principles series right here on the podcast and to help you dig deeper into your relationship with food and body. I have created a downloadable workbook that goes right along with the series. This is going to help you dig a little deeper into your own health, your own food story and eating experience. Included is a weekly release of workbook pages, which will have a summary of key points from the episode, a personal notes section, and here's the most important part. You're going to have bonus reflection questions to go along with each of the episodes. This is going to help you dig a little deeper, understand yourself and your relationship with food and body better. You can purchase this workbook at any time and go through episodes 133 to 143. This workbook that I've created is for someone who is brand new to intuitive eating, just starting to learn. This is also for somebody who has really no idea what intuitive eating is at all. This workbook is also helpful if you have been on the intuitive eating journey and you just want to continue on that and dig a little deeper head to healthcoachforlife.com slash IE workbook, or head into the show notes of any of the episodes from the series.